Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass calculus. In this video we're going to go over derivative example problems by going over the power rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, then you can try the practice problems at the end of this video. I also have a derivatives rules cheat sheet that you can download on my blog mathsucks.org so be sure to check that out at the end of this video. I'll put all the links in the description below. So what is a derivative? We use the derivative to find the rate of change of a function with respect to a variable. So you can find out more about what that means and its proper notation here on this website, mathisfun.com. I'll put that in the link in the description below as well. Before we begin, here's just a quick overview of all the derivative rules we're going to go over. And we're going to have three examples of each. So don't worry if these don't make sense to you just now. And yeah, you could totally download this on the cheat sheet below. So now let's look at some examples. First, let's start with the power rule. This is the easiest rule. This happens when we have x raised to a power, so a variable raised to a power, and then we bring down that power, multiply it by the variable, and then subtract that original exponent. So we have three examples here. Let's look at the first one. We have f of x is equal to x to the fourth. So when we apply the power rule and find the derivative of this function, we're going to get f of prime of x is equal to, now we're just going to bring down that exponent, 4 times x, the variable, and then we're just going to subtract 1 from that exponent. So this becomes 4 minus 1, which is just 3, and that's our answer. So we're going to just do the same pattern with the second example. We have g of x is equal to 3x squared plus 1. So this time we're going to write g prime of x and then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna bring down two, but this time we have a three in front of our variable. So we're just gonna multiply two times three, which gives us six, leaving us with x. And we're gonna subtract this exponent two minus one. This just gives us one, so we're just gonna leave that the same. Whenever we have whole numbers, we're just gonna, they're just we're gonna become zero. So this will be our final answer for number two. And the last one for the power rule here, we have h of x equal to 5x to the fourth plus 2x minus 1. So we're going to just do the same thing. And we're going to get h prime of x is equal to 20x cubed plus 2. And remember, when we have a whole number, it just zeroes out. So this is our answer. Up next we have the product rule. So that's when we have two numbers or variables being multiplied together. And then what we do is we find the, the derivative of one times the original, and then we're gonna add it to the derivative times the other times the original of the other one. So, so let's look at how this works. So first, for number one, we have x to the fourth, y to the fifth. So let's just say this is equal to f of x, and let's say this is equal to g of y. So we have f of x is equal to x to the fourth, and then f prime, or the derivative of f, is equal to 4x cubed. And then when we find g of y, we're just saying that's equal to the other part of this, which is y to the fifth, and then the derivative of g to the y is gonna be 5y to the fourth. So these are all the pieces to the puzzle that we're gonna need to fill this in. So so now, um, so you can do this in your head, but if you're just starting out, you're going to want to follow this formula here for the product rule. So we're going to look at f, so we're going to leave, so, and now we're going to fill in our formula. So we have f, which is x to the fourth, g prime, which is 5y to the fourth, and then plus f prime, 4x cubed times g which is y to the fifth. So you can leave that, or you can realize maybe you wanna move this five outside, so I'm just gonna do that to make it nice and pretty. Five x to the fourth, y to the fourth, plus four x cubed, y to the fifth. And that's our answer. So, okay, let's try another one. So here is our f of x, here's our g of y, and let's find them on the side here. So we have f of x equals x cubed, f prime of x is equal to 3x squared, and then we have g of y, which is y cubed, 
So this is a very similar problem. G y g prime of y is equal to three y squared. And now let's just, so we have all the pieces. Let's look again at our product rule. So we have f, which is x cubed, x cubed times g of g prime of y, which is three y squared plus f prime, which is three x squared times g, which is y cubed. So again, I'm just gonna move out that three to make this nice and pretty. Three x cubed y squared plus three x squared y cubed. And that's our answer for the second example. So last one, so this one looks a little different. So let's see how this works out. So we have f of x is equal to x plus one. f prime of x is equal to one. So we only have that one variable here, so we only get one. g of x is equal to x squared plus three. g prime of x is equal to two x. So we're just using that power rule that we learned um, with that first derivative rule. So now let's follow along with our formula. So we get f, which is x plus one, times g prime, which is two x, plus f prime, which is just one, times g, which is x squared plus three. So notice we can distribute it and do a little algebra here to clean this up. So I'm just gonna do that, two x squared plus two x, and then plus x squared plus three. Notice we can combine two x squared and x squared, and this will give us three x squared plus two x plus three. And that's our answer. On to the quotient rule. So here we have, you know, we get a ratio, a fraction, uh, f to g, and then we want to, to get the derivative of f over g, we're gonna take the derivative of f times g minus the derivative of g times f all over g squared. So again, you know, these rules can look intimidating, but once you get f and f prime and g and g prime, we're just filling in it. So let's say that our three is our f, and x plus one is our g. So we get f of x equals three, f prime of x is equal to zero this time, because we only have that whole number three. g of x is equal to x plus one, g prime of x is equal to just one. And then we're just gonna fill this in. So we have f prime is zero times g, which is x plus one, even though it doesn't matter, because right? we're gonna have a zero, and this is gonna become zero, minus g prime, which is one, times f of x, which is three, all over g squared. So g is x plus one, and we're just gonna square that. So this is gonna give us zero minus three, which is just negative three, all over x plus one squared. So remember that we, just remembering notation that we found ddx of this function here, which is negative three over x plus one squared. So let's try another one. So we have f, this is our g. So we have f of x is equal to x squared. f prime of x is equal to two x. g of x is equal to x plus two. g prime of x is just the derivative of that, which is one. And now we have everything we need and let's plug it, plug our stuff into this. So we have f prime is two x times g, which is x plus two, minus g prime, which is just one, times f, which is x squared, all over g squared, which is x plus two squared. So I could stop here, or you could realize we could distribute a bit around, so let's do that. So we get two x squared plus four x minus x squared all over x plus two squared. So again, we can combine these two, two x squared minus x squared, will just give us x squared plus four x all over x plus two squared. So again, we can simplify this a little bit more. So let's just see, um, we can take out an x from the top here. So when we do that, we'll get x on the outside and then x plus four on the inside all over x plus two squared. And we can't reduce this anymore, so this is our 
final answer here. Okay, looking good. Okay, so next up we have the quotient rule again. This time we're doing a trig function with cos of x over x. So this is the first time we're doing a trig function today. So here's just a little reminder about um, derivatives of trig functions. So they're, they're nothing scary. They're just like something you get used to with practice that you kind of end up memorizing. So we're saying that our cosine is f of x. And the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. And now our g of x is equal to just x. And g prime of x is just equal to what? So now let's plug in our stuff into our quotient rule. So we get f prime, which is negative sine of x, times g, which is just x, minus g prime, which is just 1, times f, which is cosine of x, all over g squared, or x squared. So I'm just gonna, so this is our answer, but just to rework it so it looks nicer and a bit easier to understand, I'm just gonna take out I'm just going to put this x to the end here. So we get minus x sine of x minus cosine of x all over x squared. You could even rework this again if you realize we can uh, move the cosine of x to the other side and add x sine of x because we're basically kind of negating everything and moving things around a bit over x squared. So if you don't know what I just did, you could just leave your answer like this. That's totally okay. Last but not least, we have our chain rule. So there's so many different rules to remember with derivatives, but as long as you uh, recognize them, they shouldn't be so hard. So here's our last one, the chain rule. So that's when we kind of have these nested functions. So we have f of g of x. So that's how we recognize the chain rule. And what we do here is we're going to find the derivative of the whole thing on the outside and then whatever is on the inside. So that's like nesting, finding the derivative on the outside times the derivative of the inside function. So, so let's look at our first example. We have cosine of x squared, another trig function here. So we have f of x is equal to cosine of x. And then our derivative of that is going to be negative sine of x, which we just did in the last example. And then our g of x is equal to x squared. And g, that right, just like this inside here. So this is our g. And then the whole outside is the f. And then our g prime of x is going to be equal to 2x. So now we're just gonna find the f prime, which is negative sine of x, but instead of this x, we're gonna put g of x. So inside we have x squared. And then we're gonna find g prime of x, which we found here, which is just two x. So remember, we're finding the derivative, d dx, just putting that notation out there. And then I'm just gonna reorder this and put 2x where it belongs, so it doesn't confuse you. It's gonna go outside that sine of x, so negative 2 of x sine of x squared, just because we're multiplying it by sine of x. We wanna make sure we're aware of it. So that's our answer. So let's try another one. This one looks a little different again. f of x is equal to x minus two. So we're saying that in here is f, and the derivative of that is just one. And then g of x is gonna be the whole thing. So this is gonna be x minus two squared. And the derivative of that is just gonna be two times x minus two. So we're just using that power rule for this g of x here. And then we're gonna do the same thing. So we have f prime of g of x, so f prime of g of x. So that's just going to be one. And then the next part is we want to find g prime of x, which we have right here, which is just 2 times x minus 2. So our answer here is just 2 times x minus 2. 
Okay, we have another similar question for our last question of the chain rule and our last question for this video, where f of x is gonna be, we're gonna take use that inside again. This is f, so we get 4x squared minus 2, and the derivative of that is equal to 8x. And then for our outside, we have the entire thing, which is going to be 4x squared minus 2 raised to the fourth power. And the derivative of that is going to be 4 times 4x squared minus 2 raised to the third power. So now let's again look at our rule. We want f prime of g of x. So we have f prime right here, which is just going to be 8x. And then g prime of x is this whole guy right here. So that's 4 times 4x squared minus 2 raised to the third power. And notice we can just multiply these two whole numbers together. And when we do that, we'll get 32x times 4x squared minus 2 raised to the third power. And that's our answer. So if you're looking for more, check out the practice questions right here. The answers are up on the blog, massucks.org. And remember, I also have a derivatives cheat sheet that goes over each type of derivative that you can download for free. The link is in the description below. And if this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks so much for stopping by and happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.